So why are amino acids important and which ones should you be taking? Get ready, you're gonna be pleasantly surprised. Grab a pen and paper and we're gonna talk about it right now. All right, why are amino acids important? I know you're curious or else you wouldn't be looking at this right now. And which one should you be taking? Well, today I'm joined with one of my good friends, Dr. David Minkoff, who's got a huge medical practice down here in Florida. Dr. Minkoff, thank you so much for joining us. Good. Good to be here. All right. Why don't we talk about the amino acids that are most important for people to think about and why? Okay. Most people don't digest food very well and the blend of foods that they eat may not be digested properly. And so there's, of amino acids, there's eight essential ones, which means your body can't make them. You have to take them in in the diet. And if you take them in in the diet, then your body can build all the proteins that it wants. Body's made out of protein. There's actually about 50,000 proteins in your body. So things from hormones to livers and cytokines and enzymes and all this stuff, neurotransmitters. So the eight essential amino acids are required. There are blends of eight essential amino acids, perfect aminos, one of them, where you get the right amount in the right ratio. And then if you take them in, these are pre-digested, your body can build, recover, repair, and then function the way it's supposed to. So that's one thing about amino acids that's really important. Sometimes amino acids are used as targets so that the body will use them and make something else. So here's an example of one. Tryptophan is an amino acid which is important in sleep because it's a precursor to melatonin. It is also important in energy because it is a precursor, which means the body takes tryptophan and it makes NAD, which is something that the body uses to make energy with. It's also important in serotonin so it takes tryptophan and it makes serotonin. Now, if you don't have enough serotonin, you may be very depressed or you might be anxious, okay? So I had a whole series of patients which had one thing in common. They either couldn't, they, they actually they had three things in common. They, they were having trouble with sleep, they were in trouble with energy, and they were in trouble with depression. And when I did blood levels of amino acids, I found that all of them were very deficient in the amino acid tryptophan. Interestingly, they were all on medication that blocked stomach acid. So they were on something like Nexium or Tagamet or Pepsid, which blocks stomach acid. Now, if you block stomach acid, you're not going to digest your proteins effectively. And if you don't digest your proteins, you're not going to get tryptophan because tryptophan comes along with dietary protein. So what I did was I was able to take them off their blockers for the drug, but also give them extra tryptophan and their sleep improved because they made melatonin, and their energy improved because they made NAD, and their depression improved because they made serotonin. So that can be very effective. We find that between one and three grams of tryptophan taken at bedtime can often help people with sleep. So that's what, one tip. What you're describing here, though, too, is also very important for people to realize that they are deficient because perhaps they're not taking in enough, but what you're also highlighting here is there are toxicity issues that can often get in the way of people getting the amino acids in their body where they need it, right? Right, and it may be problems with absorption or digestion within their GI tract, even if they're eating the right foods. Uh, the next one I wanna address is tyrosine. This is another thing I noticed in the clinic, that a lot of people who had low thyroid, like their thyroid hormones were low, often had deficiencies of an amino acid called tyrosine. Now thyroid hormone is actually a tyrosine molecule plus three or four iodines. A lot of people are also deficient in iodine. So sometimes you can get someone who's got low thyroid, you can get them to make more thyroid if you give them extra tyrosine and some extra iodine they will actually start making thyroid hormone because the low level was actually a deficiency. It wasn't anything wrong with their thyroid gland. Wow, that's amazing. So they don't have to necessarily have this 
hormone therapy. It's about going around the back door, <laughs> supplying the right nutrients on board to get those levels up to where they should be. Exactly. Uh, the last one I want to talk about is theanine. And oftentimes people can use theanine to help with anxiety. Theanine by the body gets converted into GABA, GABA aminobenzoic acid. The target of anti-anxiety drugs is GABA, the benzos, the benzo drugs, Ativan uh, and things of the Valium, things of that class. They all have a calming effect. Calming effect, anti-anxiety effect. The drugs don't actually fix the levels of GABA in the body. So you always need the drug. You always need the drug. They target the receptor. But to get around it, a lot of times you can give theanine in higher doses. It will get the body to produce more GABA. And if it produces more GABA, the anxiety level goes down. So these can be things where you use amino acids for overall nutrition. You've got to take all eight or targeted to handle a specific problem. What about those people who are very athletic out there? I know you're an Ironman triathlete. You enjoy triathlons very much. Yeah. Talk to those people out there about how important amino acids are for those athletic-minded people out there. A lot of times people who are doing a lot of athletics type stuff need extra amino acids, and they should be taking the eight essential amino acids. So Perfect Amino is the, the product that I take. And I, like yesterday, uh, I'm training for an Ironman. So I did a six hour and 15 minute bike ride yesterday. Uh, I took 10 grams of amino acids when I started. I took five grams every hour and I took 10 more grams when I finished. I can hear the voices out there. What about those people out there saying, oh, come on with all this like supplementation, having to add this. I can get everything I need from the food that I eat. What do you say to those people? Well, if you're overdoing it, like training for an Ironman, you need more. Even if you're not overdoing it, a lot of people are low in essential amino acids. If you measure blood levels of essential amino acids, they will have low ones. And so I think it's good for everyone to supplement some just so they make sure that they're getting all that they really need in order to function healthily. And can we talk for a moment, because I did mention before, this is an important thing. Now we understand the essential amino acids and what they do for us, we get it. But some of the things that get in the way, let's talk about maybe for a minute or so, the toxicity issues around a lot of people's lives that make it difficult for them to get those amino acids on board, especially if they're relying just on a salad or some healthy food to get them where they need to go. Okay, so salad doesn't have many amino acids. You can't do it, okay? The best sources of amino acids are animal proteins. So meat, fish, and actually eggs with the yolk are the best source of amino acids for food. Are those okay. vegans in trouble out there? Or what if they wanna be vegan? What do you say to them? Uh, they need to take essential amino acids in addition. The levels of essential amino acids in beans and rice proteins and other vegetable pro soy uh, are not very good. You can actually measure how quality is a protein based on the amount of essential amino acids in it. They talk what? about spirulina as being that perfect vegan. I'm sure you've heard it before. Yes. So what do you say about those people who say, oh, I'm fine, I'm covered, I've got spirulina. Okay, so hold your ears if you love spirulina, because, so if you eat a dietary protein, the thing that it's made out of are amino acids, okay? And those amino acids have to be digested, they go into your body, and then your body has to reassemble those amino acids into your own proteins, right. okay? Now, there's eight essential ones. If you take the essential amino acids, you can measure, like you could take steak and say, okay, if I eat 100 grams of steak, how much of the steak actually got made into protein in my body right. versus how much did the body convert it into fuel, okay? And for meat, it's about 33%. For fish, it's about 33%. For eggs, it's about 48%. That's why I say eggs are better, okay? But if you look at soy, it's only about 16%. Dairy proteins are only about 16%. Spirulina is only 6%. Right. 
So the blend of essential amino acids in spirulina is such that there isn't the right stuff there for the body to take it and make it into protein. It works for whales, but it doesn't work for humans. Right, and the more physically active we are, of course we do need more, as you've already said, but what about that toxicity as we close out here? What about the toxic issues that make it difficult for people to get in the amino acids or any other nutrition for that matter? Well, they gotta be able to chew it, so they need teeth. They gotta be able to digest it, which starts in the stomach, so they need acid, they need enzymes, uh, a lot of people are low in pancreatic enzymes. They're low in stomach acid. Or they have overgrowth in their small intestine of yeast or parasites or bad bacteria. Their intestinal membrane is damaged or it's, it does, it's unable to accept it. And those are big challenges for people. These yeah, days. that has to be addressed. And that's for other videos. Look, if you like this information and you want more on this topic, go visit naturalhealth365.com. Make sure if you haven't already, sign up for our newsletter. You just enter your first name and email address and we'll send you some gifts and you'll be a part of our community. Dr. Minkoff, where can people find more information about you if they wanna look into it a little bit more? Okay, so my clinic is lifeworkswellnesscenter.com. We're in Clearwater, Florida. About three quarters of our patients come from far away, so we service people mostly with chronic severe disease. Cancer, autoimmune disease, Alzheimer's, Lyme disease, so that's mainly what we do. You can also find me at bodyhealth.com. It's a product company I have. Lots of information there on amino acids and other supplements. All right, more information coming soon. Hope you enjoyed this. You wanna post your comments down below. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks again for being with us. We'll talk to you soon. Take care.